one of the biggest uh, difficulties in understanding <clears throat> the uh, modern books, contemporary books, is that sometimes the writers of those books, they say two different things. The same author will say, you receive, you receive bhakti from Krishna, or you can receive bhakti, the seed of bhakti from Guru. Okay? Because that's what he, that's what it says in the Shastra, and that's the translation. Then that same translator, the same author, in the same book, a short few verses later, says that prema, pure love for Krishna, is inside the heart of every jiva. And then, although it is not in the Bengali at all, another line is added there. It said, it's not to be gotten from an outside source. It's right in the verse. I mean, I mean, not in the verse, but it's in the translation by this author. And that same author, ten verses before that, said that bhakti is received from an outside source. Krishna or Guru. Usually, Guru or devotee. And last life or this life. So now, the, the writings of such an author will be a little confusing. So now someone has to have fine discretion, a non-offensive discretion, fine discretion based on intelligence, which gives that discrimination power, intelligence. And admittedly, most people don't have too much. And intelligence and study of Shastra to know what it is, is there. There's two views being presented almost on all issues, there's two views everywhere. And this, in the, some books by some acharyas, they often have two, di- two views. It's not consistent. Sometimes the, the statements and commentaries and translations are exactly according to the, to the conceptions and understandings of, of our great Mahajans. They're in concordance, they're in agreement with Six Goswami's teachings in the Bhagavatam, Gita, Vishwanath, Narata, and Baladev. And sometimes they're just the opposite. So now what to do? Because the author uh, may be someone's guru or someone's param guru or the, in their line. Mm-hmm. So that they have a certain sense of chastity to that guru or that parampara and a certain sense of loyalty and chastity and faith and uh, because we're devotees by nature most devotional type people that surrender to God I mean to Guru and seriously practice spiritual life they're sub- somewhat by nature submissive to some extent submissive and humble curious uh, intelligent wanting something more than this birth and death world has to offer. So they turn to God, they turn to Guru. Uh, but Prabhupada himself, he's often said, we should study the books of the previous Acharyas. He said, we must. He said, even some places he writes a letter, we must study the books of the previous Acharyas, otherwise you'll fall down. <laughs> so when one does that, he'll see that on many issues, even among great Acharyas like Jiva Goswami or uh, Vishwanath, there are differences of opinion about fine, fine points of rasa. Is Radha and Krishna's relationship parakya or swakya? And in one place, Jiva Goswami is saying swakya, that they're married, and everyone else is saying parakya. And Vishwanath says, he, he flatly goes against he says Jiva Goswami he's, I don't know why I don't know why he's saying this I think he he's just said this for someone else's benefit he, had, he was writing this article to please some friend of his <laughs> I can't accept this and he says I can't accept it and he promoted and explained Paraki above which is the actual situation so even on the highest highest level of Mahajans Gaudi Vaishnava Charis and Mahajans there may be Sandesh Bade differences of opinion on the philosophy. 
basically it boils to d- down to what settles what settles and what what appeals to your intellect at the particular time that you're looking at yourself and your spiritual life and if sometimes you you're in, in one stage in your spiritual life you'll be reading so many things you don't know very much so it's all new and you're simply reading and swallowing everything and accepting everything and assuming that everything is perfect and everything is correct and everything is right because the guru is supposed to give the perfect, right and correct knowledge to the student, disciple. So you carry on like that. But as you grow and mature and expand your reading, uh, which is part of the instruction of the guru to read all of our Goswami books, and then you don't know in the beginning, but pretty soon you come to know, oh, we are supposed to follow, especially follow the teachings and example and writings of Rupa and Raghunath. It doesn't say Sanatana Goswami, although many people, their Bible is Briyad Bhagavatamritam. Mm-hmm. But this, there's some, you know, the Briyad Bhagavatamritam, the, 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 the hero of that book is a, a, a Gopa mm-hmm. and Sakiras. And there's not, everywhere else, every other book, every other Acharya is all about Madhurya Ras. And all the Acharyas and writers of those books are all Mandris in Madhurya Ras, Mandri Bhav, including Sanatan. So then that, again, is another cause of bewilderment among some Acharyas. Why, why? But then they explain that to have this, no, it's a novel, it's a philosophical odyssey of Gopal Kumar, who was a coward boy from Vrindavan, and he loved Krishna as a human being, and he got a guru and he chanted a mantra, Gopal mantra, and he went all over the universe looking for Gopal, and he finally found him in uh, Goloka Vrindavan, and then he came back to earth and he realized there's no difference, because that's one of the teachings of the book. The teaching of the book is not that, oh yes, yeah, Saki Ras is something good for Gaudiya's, that is not the teaching of the book. teaching of the book is to show the highest form of God it is Krishna and Vrindavan. And there's no difference between Boma Vrindavan, Aprakrita Leela, and Aprakrita. When Gopal Kumar was on this earth planet, it was 500 years ago, when Sanatana Goswami was here. And this is called, called Aprakrita. It's invisible. We can't see Krishna's pastimes, although they're going on right in front of our eyes. If our eyes are spiritualized and full of praying, then we can see them. We can hear Krishna's flute with our ears right now, today, in this Vrindavan, if we have the purity of heart and the, and the will, of, and Krishna wants us to hear it. Because when Krishna plays his flute 5,000 years ago in the same Vrindavan, his past signs are prakat, visible and tangible and hearable. But even then, when he plays his flute, not everybody can hear it. Because he plays in such a way at night, Everyone has ears. Jatila has ears, Abhimanyu has ears, Rishabhano, Nandamaraj, everyone, gopis, squirrels, cows, deers, everybody has ears. But when Krishna plays his flute at night, not everyone hears. Only those Madhurya Premi Bhaktis hear. And Madhurya, Madhurya Premi Bhaktis are his consorts, his, the damsels of Braj, Radharani, Alita Vishaka, Saki, etc. They hear the early rolling through the air and entering their ears and dancing sweetly in their hearts with invitation. Krishna is inviting each of the gopis through the musical, loving musical notes of his flute. He's inviting each individual gopi, Oh, Radha, please come. Please come. Be with me. Please dance with me. It's a beautiful night. Please join me on the banks of the Muna. I'm eagerly waiting for you and anticipating your arrival. Please don't wait. Don't hesitate. Please come quickly. And then he plays again and he calls Alita, Vishaka, everyone. So even in this Aprakat Vrindavan today, 500 years ago or even now, if we have that purity of bhav or prem, we can also hear Krishna's flute. If we have that Madhurya bhav, we'll hear late at night, we'll hear Krishna calling us. We'll hear Krishna's flute and someday we'll see Krishna. Many things happen in Vrindavan. It's a magical land full of surprises and mystery and full of Krishna's presence. So the jiva issue... <laughs> I could probably answer that question. If I said yes, what would, how would it benefit you? If I said no, how would it benefit you? Either way, it wouldn't benefit you. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> nice, cute question. But I don't think so. Otherwise, I should be, you know, exhibiting all the symptoms of prema. But since I'm not, then that's it. the answer is no. Obviously, they can draw a conclusion by observing certain symptoms. <laughs>